Hello, my Bill for Thousand Nation. How's everyone doing today? Hopefully, everyone's having a great day. If not, I hope it gets better from here. We are back with another That Chapter. This one's a little different than what we normally do from him. This one is titled, Investigating America's Scariest City at Halloween, Salem. All right. I'm excited to get into this story. Hopefully, you guys are excited as I am. And if you are, go ahead, turn them lights down low. Put on something comfy. Cut up with someone special. Let's get a little weird. Yeah. And, yes, sporting the new Bill 5000 merch. If y'all haven't had a chance to yet, go down the store, check it out. It's amazing stuff. Oh, and it feels so good. So soft on the nipples. You can't beat that. That's what you want in a shirt. Soft on the nipples. If you don't know, trust me. That's what you want. Hey you and welcome, my name is Mike and in this solo video I am in Salem, Massachusetts, the Halloween capital of the world. Now Salem at Halloween is a nightmare and probably not in the kind of for like the spooky season you're expecting. Shitter's full. Uh, don't come, yeah. It is a madhouse. I frankly love it, but does everybody? So we are going to ask what the tourists think, what the locals think, and most importantly, what you think as we explore the witch city at Halloween together. And I, I really do want to find a witch too. Let's give it a go. Just start walking through Salem. Are you a witch? Are you a witch? But before are we got to witch? Salem, there was a certain hotel in Concord I just had to visit. With, you know, it, it being Halloween and all. Because allegedly, get this, it's very haunted. Um, according to this book I found at the checkout of a Walgreens. When I checked into Concord's Colonial Inn, I was immediately overwhelmed with the lingering energy of the ghosts of the city's tumultuous past. The spirits of Concord called me. I felt the exact same way. This is going to be so much fun. Yeah, he's, he, Concord he is only about time. 40 minutes by train from Boston, and it's most famous for being the place where the shot heard around the world was fired from. All right, made it to Concord. Let's see how this goes. Paul Revere, he did his good old midnight ride, and the old North Bridge is where the very first battle of the American Revolution took place in 1775. First thing we see is a graveyard. It's a good sign. Love me some graveyards. The Colonial Inn is older than the Revolution, if you can believe that, by a good 60 years, and it's located in the center of Concord. I was able to get a room for the night, and I managed to snag a helpful note at check-in, reminding me of just how haunted the hotel was, just in case I wasn't aware. Right, that's And of the it. many tales of what. Like nine times out of ten, the reason why they're staying there is because it's on them. We, I, yeah, most people don't need a piece of paper telling them how haunted it is. But for those of people who like don't didn't know it was haunted and was just looking for a good night's sleep, I bet that paper comes in real fucking handy. Hot roams its spooky halls. Now, I don't believe in ghosts, or I should say at least that I've never experienced anything <clears throat> paranormal or anything like that. So don't worry, folks, I'm not turning into a ghost hunter or anything like that. But when I heard most... I mean, how many people out there would like to see my ghost hunt? I would go ghost hunting with him. I would. Like, that would be fucking fun. Comment down below. Me and my ghost hunters. Extraordinary. Most haunted hotel in Massachusetts. You know I just had to check it out. Though I have to say, the most haunting thing about this hotel was... Check it out. I think I just solved the haunting. This is it. So now I'm here in the Colonial Inn in Concord, Massachusetts. Apparently one of the most haunted hotels oh in America. Now I've seen it ranked like from one all the way down to the sixth most haunted hotel, but between you and me, let's just say it's number one because that just sounds better. Let's be honest. This hotel was actually used as a hospital for wounded Patriot soldiers. Oh, and shit. then, um, kind of, you know, frequently, like also a morgue for them too. Yeah, a lot of places back then. <clears throat> so many people was dying and getting hurt. Hotels. Pretty much anyone that had a roof over him was turned into a hospital or 
a makeshift hospital slash morgue. It, it didn't matter. There was just so much death and destruction. It, you had to do it where you had to do it. Some people have been awoken in the middle of the night to a grayish figure standing at the side of the bed. Others have reported lights flickering in the room or turning on and off completely. Maybe it just needs new wiring. You don't want everything to be antique in an antique home. One guest woke up in the middle of the night and every light was on in the room, including the television. Guests have heard whispers coming from rooms, slamming. Them ghosts know how to work a flat screen? Them, them ghosts can't be that old, bruh. Because back in that day, man, they didn't, I, they didn't have TV. I don't think they had the radio. They barely had the telephone. They had to use lanterns. If we're talking about Paul Revere's ride, he didn't get a cell phone call. He got a lantern. Doors. I'm sure a couple of guests in the rooms beside me might hear some noises tonight. Well, other than that, though, there's been like people reportedly um, getting tucked into bed by the ghosts, which is like... That's fucking amazing. I've had that experience. and I've mentioned it in another video. I, my, my dad was in the hospital and everyone was over there with him and I had to stay with my uncle and my aunt. And a ghost lady came walking down the stairs, covered up my feet ding the bell on the christmas tree and walk out the door like i didn't feel scared i i, I felt relaxed comfortable like i it, I, I didn't feel scared in any way like it, it's it's i've had no experience since then i've had no experience before that i mean i'm not like one of those sensitive people that's like there's ghosts everywhere but <clears throat> i'm not gonna sit here and say i didn't see it i I could have been half asleep. I I don't know. We had been at the hospital for a while that, that, that day. And I don't know. Maybe I was just so exhausted and so tired. And so much stuff was going on in my head that I imagined it. Like, I don't know, fever dream or something. But I felt it. I seen it. Like, you could even smell, like, old perfume. It was weird. Really, really nice. I actually hope that happens to me. Uh, you also got your orbs. Classic. Gotta love me some orbs. The shittest ghosts you'll ever find. So yeah, this is the room. Previous thing about this place is... I don't believe in orbs. Dust, bugs, stuff like that, but orbs. I, I just don't... The carpet. But enough playing around. Night swiftly fell, and it was time to find ghosts. After all, Ghost Hunters did it. Apps investigates a haunted inn that witnessed the shot heard around the world. People have woken up and seen two soldiers. Scooby-Doo did it. And now that chapter will do it. Oh, so yeah. it's like the middle Let's of the night. It. In the Colonial Inn. <laughs> most haunted in Massachusetts. Most haunted in Massachusetts. Zero ghosts. Where are they? Okay, it's late. The hotel's quiet. Let's see what we can see. Sadly, after roaming the halls at night with my trusty GoPro and night vision camera, there is nothing to be seen. Not even a presence to be felt in the entire heck and heck of a building. It'd be real cool if like a ghost appeared right there. Nothing. Thanks a lot. I kept waking up in the middle of the night and looking around, you know, hoping to see a shadow in the corner of the room or something. Hoping no to see something. dice gotcha. are all Mikey. No ghosts to report. I guess they just had no time for me and my, my, my cool ass. Head shake of disappointment. Man, that's bad when, you know, our ghosts are disappointing Mike, man. We need, we need to step up our game over here. Pumpkin glasses. The food and drinks were, were great, though. I will give them that. Is it me? Am I the problem here? I'm feeling very self-conscious about this whole ordeal right now. So unfortunately, I... <laughs> the one ghost hunter in the world that gets a complex from not seeing ghosts. Why don't you like me? I did not have the ghost hunter's experience. And honestly, I'm going to be honest, I was oh, pretty shit. bummed out. I didn't have the shite scared out of me. Anything? Did you hear that? 
Come here. Listen. Sounds like moaning or whining. Yeah. All right. I'm moaning or whining. <laughs> So now, with that done and dusted, Zerio Ghosties to report, onwards it was. And I was excited to make my way to the spookiest city in America, the home of witches. Sadly, it oh, turned yeah. out that Hertz just it. happened to be out of broom rentals, so train it was. Yeah. Salem is about 30 minutes north of Boston. It has a rich and colorful history that's... Uh, you know, uh, let's be honest, when you hear the word Salem, there's only one thing being conjured in your mind. Witch trials, a massacre, So this is the witch house brutality. where the witches live. I tried knocking. They didn't like that at all. So I'm gonna shock you right now. This is the Salem witch house, but it's not where any witches actually lived. It's where a judge during the Salem witch trials, he lives here. I asked though, he doesn't know where the witches are either, so. Poor Mike's having a hell of a go with it. That looks like something off a of fucking Bloodborne, bro. Each year, the number of people who visit the Witch City is growing. In 2023 alone, it's estimated that approximately 1 million people will visit the town, an increase of 35% over the last four years. Did I mention that Salem only has a population of about 45,000 people? So, as you can imagine for those who are in Salem during the other 10 months of the year, Halloween is a literal, not nightmare. figurative and cozy, nightmare of epic proportions. And so I, I wanted to speak with some tourists about what brought that them here, terrifier. and some locals terrifies me. about how they feel about it. <clears throat> Did I mention it gets busy? That's Great Grandma crazy. Susanna North Martin was hung as a witch in 1692. Wow. It's, what do you think of the town? It's so quaint. Yeah? You like love it? Love it. Ambiance of everything. Yeah. You're yeah. having a good time here so far? So far. So in 1692, dozens and dozens of... The grandmother of the witches you couldn't burn. I like that. That's an awesome shirt. People, and also not people, were accused of being witches. But for 25 people in particular, Things did not go well for them, I'll tell you that. Salem is a beautiful town, and yet, honestly, you're better off going... Yeah, that, that, that had to be, like, the one of the most ridiculous times in history, like... Oh. ...in the off-season, as you can probably see for yourself. Unless you're, you're one of those weirdos who actually likes being around no, lots of people. Totally so many needless pointless deaths like it was so stupid For most of the year salem is actually a pretty quiet sleepy little town and i get it i know a lot of you out there are like no bill is no stupid it's our history i get it but the premise that they went through was pretty stupid it's just oh them women ain't listening it's the devil no they're just people and they have their own fucking opinion like it, it was just a way to try to keep women in line if you ask me, I'm sorry, but that's it's bullshit. Oh no, everyone's sick. We're all scared because we're kind of stupid. Now let's just go blame her. She lives by herself. She has a bunch of cats. She was outside doing some weird shit the other day. She's probably a witch. Let's go kill her. Oh, that's so stupid. Except from September to October 31st, it is a mad house. Uh, try right now to book a hotel for late October. Almost all hotels are about two years in advance. Go ahead and let you know. Probably booked out or are charging extortionate prices. <laughs> it's your first time here in Salem? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Oh, okay, yes. and what do you guys think about it? So far, we like it. Cool, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I did think it would be this insane. Yeah, yeah we yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, expected yeah. it since it's right before Halloween. I've definitely always wanted to visit Salem in yeah. general. Do you feel sorry for the locals who have to live in this all year round and then it gets insane? I'm yeah. sorry a little bit, yes. I think they're probably... I think they're used to it, and I think if you live in Salem, you kind of expect it. Plus, it is probably a really good form of revenue. 
probably well adapted to it. Yeah, right yeah. I've it's seen a lot of reviews that um, people are saying that you can come all year round mm -hmm. and that there's, to um, not touristy, but Halloween stuff all year round that you can check out. Yeah. It's not just October. Yeah. So I know some people try to do that and it's definitely a lot more busy during this time. I do think that... Go on Christmas? Can you go? I want to go to the witch place on Christmas, bro. Like, or during the winter solstice. See, if I went someplace like that, I would want to go on, like, a, a, during a time that was representative to them. Like, you know, during a solstice or during, like, a ritual for, like, your harvest or something. Yeah, like a harvest ritual or something. It was something where they would be pre prevalent, you know, like, that's when I want to, that's when I would want to go. They're probably used to it. <clears throat> <laughs> the first one said they feel like they're screaming go home and this one here says not only am i similarly tempted i sometimes give in to the temptation salem is a fun town a p-a-r-t-y town especially if you love overpriced witch hats so you can dress up with uh without you know the the repercussions of doing so in 1692 it becomes a fun fair of epic proportions more hook I mean, if you don't like it, you probably shouldn't live in Salem. I'm just saying. Like, if you if you live in Salem, be expected to have to deal with that bullshit. This pocus, though, than the hysteria and tragedy of the innocent people killed over 300 years ago. Is it a, a time to reflect on mass hysteria, believing false accusations, how stress on community can lead to bitter infighting? Don't mind if I read. Hell no. Is that Frankenstein? Let me get a picture. I found a witch too! Michael, she wants a picture with you in a second. Uh, multiple, actually. Where are we going? To the Salem Night Fair. That's where we're going right now. Hopefully it'll be like really spooky, creepy. Yeah. I've been following it on Instagram it's for a while. Accent. It's awesome, so... Cool. Let's go and find out! <laughs> People come here for the fun, to find magic, whether real or imagined. Yes, everyone here is just dressed in a crazy and wacky costume, but isn't it more fun. fun to pretend that they aren't? From the unholy baptisms to the Baphomet chilling in the Nightmare Village, it feels at times like walking into a hellish dreamscape, but, but a comfortable one. The word Werefestria means to wander longingly through the forest in search of mystery. And that is a vibe That's Salem gives. Cool. A cozy nightmare of moonlight and enchantment and overpriced t-shirts. Right. Do you come to Salem every Halloween? Uh, a lot. Now, if you want an overpriced t-shirt, go to the Bill for a Thousand store. You, you, you might be a little expensive, but it's so nice and soft. Yeah, I don't set the prices, but it's really good shit. A lot of my street performer buddies do. I've dabbled in it. Um, I've actually just, you know, dressed up in a costume and yeah. been here or whatever. But uh, no, this is my second time street performing here. Okay, and just what do you... Just kind of dabbling in. Okay, well, yeah, yeah and, uh, obviously it's insane yeah. here uh, around this time. Are you, like, excited to come here? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good on the weekends. I think that tourists in any town is always going to be a good thing for your restaurants because you're, you're probably local here. You don't want to turn away people, you know, in a sense, to, to visit your city. It's always going to be good for your economic, right. you know, thing. Foot traffic is always sure. going to be good. Obviously, yeah. um, there can be a lot of rowdy people and that that might not be what you really want. Um, you got to so deal with that everywhere. Certain rules for that. It's good. It's a, it's a fun feel. It's got a, that kind of, you know, 1600 vibe to mm -hmm. it or whatever, you know. So. Yeah, yeah. Salem, though, it is a sleepy town 10 months of the year. And maybe some folk would rather the witch city be known for something other than, well, uh, witches. It's a friendly town, very accepting of all walks of life, from the LGBTQ plus community to Satanists. It's a town where Nathaniel Hawthorne, author of The Scarlet Letter, grew up. It is a rich, seafaring history of trade with distant parts of the world, an incredible art scene. 
and then from late August wow. to November 1st, the town is flooded with out-of-towners leaving trash everywhere and disrupting the quiet way of life. And of course, I'd be very remiss if I didn't mention the porta potties, which put the grimiest music festival to shame. It leaves a nice, like, scent in the air. I think it's, um, oh, the shite, I think. But they do have that delicious pumpkin beer with the, with the cinnamon yes. jelly ring thing. Right now, I'm drinking a pumpkin ale, shipyard pumpkin head, and it has a rim around it that's, um, I don't know what you call it, it's like cinnamon sugar thing. So it tastes really, really good, but you drink like four or five of these and you'll be having a good time. You won't be having a good time the next day. Yeah. That's some advice for free. Yeah, you're going to hurl everywhere, homie. Bill. It's big Bill. Cool. That's what I like to call him. All right. It's good. He's been with me through a lot of hard times. The time's been a lot tougher on him than it have been on me, as you can tell. But you know, taking 10. We're having a good time. We're drinking pumpkin beer. What's up, Bill? He definitely doesn't drink. So he said I can drink though for him. So that means I get two beers. Enjoy the hangover, asshole. <laughs> but at the same time, the tourism during the autumn season can sustain businesses throughout the rest of the year. This is great. Stay open. Though. Yeah, I really enjoy Mike, man. He, he keeps me laughing like all the way through. It's great. Uh, the ghost tours and some of the right. specialty shops, yeah. they can make. 10, 11 months rent in just this one month. Yeah, I know. It's, so that's it's how they're crazy. able to stay open for the rest of the time. Yeah, exactly. Which is just mind blowing, but. Yeah. This is Rob. He's the general manager of the Village Tavern, right in the dead center of Tourism Salem on Essex Street. And it's also the biggest bar in town. So, you know, it's gonna be busy. Every time we even sniffed it in October, there was a giant queue outside. So if anyone knows Salem at Halloween, it's Rob. I think it's gotten busier since you started. Yeah. It's gotten considerably busier, but one of the big things we see is it gets earlier every year. Really? So this year was about a, the first week in September. We started seeing Halloween numbers on the weekends. Holy shit! Yeah. So Even it's in early September. Wow. Yeah. So that's when it starts filling in because people just can't get reservations. They can't get yeah. hotel rooms for the closer it gets to October. So they just want to come. Most of the attractions run year round too. The ghost tours, all the museums are still up. So a lot of people are coming a lot. The city tries to adapt to it more and more every year yeah, yeah. and get better with it. We're dealing with thousands of people coming through the tour a day yeah. that, you know, two months ago it was maybe a couple hundred on some normal days yeah, yeah. and it insignificantly money, just blows though. up. I mean, we're all putting in 20 hour days and stuff, some of us. So. Yeah. Okay, crazy tourists. Do you have like, uh, do you get a lot of them? Like weird, weird as fuck people coming in? Yeah. I mean, anyway, a lot of them, some of them are very dedicated mm -hmm. Halloween spirit people. Okay. Yeah. yeah, they're very hardcore about it, but so are some of the locals too. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of people that have moved here over the years that I've met. They come strictly to live in Salem for the one month of October. Really? Yeah. Wow. They've dedicated and wrapped their whole life around it. I think a lot of people have a higher expectation for what it is though sometimes mm -hmm. than realizing, like we were saying, it's just those two streets. Yeah. And everything's centered downtown and all that, so it's not as bad. Right, that's really interesting. It's like, uh, do you ever Paris syndrome? It's like when people go to Paris, they have this expectation. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think you know? definitely. I think they think there's a lot more historic stuff than it is. You can yeah. get a lot of it done in just a day or two. Oh, yeah, yeah. It does not take as long as everyone <laughs> thinks. Yeah. I've never even been to the Witch Museum before. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I've lived here my whole life. That's what I that's usually how it goes. Without Halloween, though, Salem would not have the finances to support a lot of the great work that's done here. And a lot of amazing businesses wouldn't be in business. A catch-22 for a lot of people. It's undeniable that without the influx of wannabe witches, the town wouldn't be what it is or what tourists want it to be. And so online, you read about folks who ain't too keen on Halloween. But from the people I met, they appreciated it as a time to make hay while the sun shines. But the main thing I kept coming back to in my head was was probably something I, I come to Salem for too. Uh, a hope to glimpse something not from this world. Yeah. What do the people who who are brought up in it think? It must be must be part of their blood, right? I think it's all a hoax. All the ghost tours, they think they hear someone, it's just the someone, down the street someone hammered in an alley screaming <laughs> to get a kick out of it. I know I've been victim to doing that before to people. <laughs> it was just you. It was There's a ghost tour. It's really just me after ghost. a few green tea shots. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's the thing. You come to Salem thinking it's spooky. For us, 
we grew up here. Yeah, it's just like, it's yeah, like nothing. That's a raccoon or something. Yeah. Or it's mm -hmm. like Joe Schmo leaving yeah. in the bar. <laughs> like, hey man, for all of us, it's just it's just home. Yeah, it's nothing, nothing crazy like that. It's just a place we all call home. Yeah, maybe not. I think my main takeaway from visiting these places like Salem, the Witch City, Unconquered, a city full of ghosts and graveyards, is that even though witches, vampires, and ghosts aren't real, question mark, my searches didn't go too well, a little part of us all wishes that they were real. Halloween is a holiday that's more popular now than it was. To yeah, we all want to know what happens after this. We, we, if there's ghosts and stuff like that, we might be able to get answers and people are all about the answers, bruh. 20 years ago. It's growing and it's growing. Each year, more and more people are visiting the witch city. Looking for horror? Nostalgia? I think they're all looking to find something that they can't explain. Looking to find that there's still, still, one little piece of magic still left in the world. Is that too cheesy? I'm excited. I'm open to all possibilities. You never know what's going to happen. A little bit. So uh, wish me luck. I'll check back in in the morning. Or whenever fits when I'm editing this video together. Fade to black. Done. How's that? And over the next few weeks on that chapter, these are some of the stories I will be telling as I continue my travels. Once I gave him the money and they gave me the drugs, mm -hmm. yeah. I would take my hat off. Ah, that is the signal. Signal that the, uh, the deal's done, you can go in and lock them up. Right. The very first reported UFO is right here. Would be here all day. So I, I, I hope you have no plans. Great to tell a haunted story while the place looks creepy as shit. It's like, um... Can you see worms? No, look, look on my thing. From more spooky places to the dark side of towns to, of course, you know, some good old true crime. Where it all happened. So. What happened? Murder. What murder? Oh, this is that chapter. Hey, you and what? All right. I liked it. I really enjoyed that. I know it's a little different than what we normally do with Mike, but. It was fucking fun, and I enjoyed it. If y'all enjoyed it as much as I did, please go down there and leave a thumbs up. While you're down there, go on over, hit that subscribe button, become part of the Bill 5000 Nation. We do some crazy shit here, bro. And if you want to know when that crazy shit happens, go on over, hit that bell. That's right. Hit it. Hit it hard. Smack it around. Show it what's for until it works for you. And then once it does work for you and you get that little notification, join us in one of the premieres where I can live chat with you. And I really enjoy it. And if you guys really, really want to, go on down. Links in the description. Check out the store. We got some amazing merch down there. This shirt is so amazing. It's so soft on the nipples you wouldn't even know unless you bought one. So buy one. As always, be good to one another. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Man, Mike, this was actually really fun. I enjoyed it. You should do this more often, homie. Like, it, 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 was, it was fun. It's